Here on the plains of Venezuela, for example, over 20 species of birds fish in the same place, and they are all visibly different. It would seem impossible for any fish to survive such a constant onslaught, but they do, and there is food enough for everyone. The secret consists of using different methods. Some gather together and beat the water with their open beaks using their sense of touch. Others work alone. They remain very still, waiting for a fish to move, and then harpoon it, if they're lucky. The final result is always the same, though there are some that use surprising techniques. The sisabil cuts the surface of the water with its lower jaw, which, unlike most birds, is longer. It has to avoid the obstacles and the alligators, but the system works. On the other side of the world, in the Celebes Islands, we find a good example of the inventiveness of man in compensating for his lack of wings and beak. They are the Bajau. They are fishing with kites, an ancient method to which recently has been added the advantage of outboard motorboats, but essentially has remained unchanged for hundreds of years. The kite rises and the direction of the fishing line changes, warning the fisher of the precise moment when he must haul it in as fast as possible. Now, with a last effort, a large needlefish comes out of the water for the last time. But there are other human populations who, though they live far from the sea, also eat fish. Here on the Guiana Massif in the south of Venezuela live ancient ethnic groups who have inhabited the Amazon forest for over 3,000 years. The Sanama, the Yequanas, or the Maquiritare know that this particular liana contains a very special substance. They call them barbasco, and after cutting them, they carefully crush them to extract the sap. The curious thing about this technique is that over a thousand kilometers away, the Huaranis in Ecuador use it in exactly the same way. They are two completely different ethnic groups, but they have in common a profound knowledge of the jungle in which they live. Here, their diet lacks mineral salts, and so these two people, essentially hunters, are very glad of the occasional chance to eat fish. The barbasco simply absorbs the oxygen in the water, forcing the fish to come to the surface. There are small pools left behind by the river, and normally there are not many fish, and those there are very small. But they are grateful for this occasional and very valuable variation in their normal diet, even if it provides relatively little energy. When it comes to quantity, however, it would be difficult to beat another very distant culture. In the Mekong Delta in Vietnam, this family is heading home to their house built on the river itself. They do not have to go fishing, they literally live with the fish. Their houses are fish farms, in which the carpet in the living room is in fact a trapdoor giving access to energy.
The entire family participates in looking after and feeding the fish imprisoned beneath their home. Human beings have become so efficient that they have managed to move, whether wisely or not, from subsistence ecology to the market economy. The excess energy can then be exchanged for other goods or for money. In any case, the ultimate aim of all processes has not changed in the slightest. It is a question of eating the body of another animal in such a way that the effort is worth it, that the final energy balance is positive. Fishing implies in some way managing to get the fish out of the water, but when the struggle takes place on land, the problem is very different. Out here, the hunter and the prey share the same surroundings, breathe the same air. Here, the interchange of energy is face to face, a challenge which natural selection has resolved by creating real killing machines.